In this chapter, we're going to be working on probability and combining them with advanced counting techniques. When we say advanced counting techniques, we really just mean permutations and combinations. Actually, which I just realized I have written right here, so I'm not going to write it out. So really, what is there to learn in this section? Yeah, nothing, right? It's it's just combining things you already know. And as you know, permutation and carbonations, that section was relatively difficult. And probability is just the idea of taking these two previous types of problems, the counting the sample space and counting the events and uh, the cardinality of both, and then um, dividing. That's, that's it. So it's just going to get a little more challenging. That's all. So I know I say it like that. It's so easy, right? No, no. Probability is not easy, right? It's very hard. So I want you to try this first problem, um, putting everything together. All right, so Sally has a bag containing three reds, two whites, seven yellows, and one black marble. How many different sets of marbles could she get if she were to select seven marbles at a time? Okay, so try the problem and pause the video and here we go okay so what we're going to do is we, this is a simple just there's no conditions it's just how many sets of seven so we just need to say how many marbles are there total well it's three uh, three plus two is five plus five seven is uh, 12 plus one is 13 so 13 out of 13 we're going to make combinations of seven uh, it's combination not permutation because they did not say that the order mattered right so there we go now if you want to actually get a value you can pop that up in your calculator and get 13 math. I'm going to personally not do a lot of this in the calculator. Um, I'm just going to leave it um, just as the 13 combination 7. But just as a reminder, uh, we can do this in the calculator, which would be 1,000, excuse me, 1,716. Okay. Um, now, next question. How many different sets of marbles could she get if there were, if she were to select 7 marbles at a time? And the group contained both white marbles. Ooh, it has to contain both white marbles. So what is that saying to us now? Well, now we have a condition. So you have to do the problem yourself. That's right. <laughs> Pause the video. Give it a shot. Okay, now let's do this. All right, let's. So if we're taking care of the condition first, um, what we're going to do is say, all right, how many white marbles are there in the bag? There are two of them. And out of those two, I need both of them. So that takes care of the, that's the world's worst W. There we go. That takes care of the white marbles. So now we need to take care of the other. We are, again, imagining we're some higher being. We've put two marbles in their hand while they're reaching inside the bag. They're both the whites, but we still have to fill in five more, right? So how many marbles are left in the bag? Well, there are 11 other colors, uh, other colored marbles, and we need to choose five of those. So two combinations, two is one. 11 combinations, five is, I don't know, again, handy dandy calculator. 11 math over to probability. Uh, we want option three. And we said we want five marbles. So that'd be 462. There we are. All right. So there are 462 different sets of marbles when you're pulling seven out of a bag where they both contain the whites. They, they contain both whites. There we go. All right. Part C. What is the probability of her getting both white marbles when selecting her seven from the bag? Well, how does this problem differ from the previous one? Well, notice the previous problem didn't say the word probability. It just said how many different sets. So, and that's what we counted. There's 462 sets. And then we also counted that there's a total of 1,716 total possible sets. So now if we're being asked to calculate the probability, well, that's, that's pretty simple because probability is just the cardinality of the event divided by the cardinality of the sample space. And in this case, our event uh, is getting both white marbles, which we already know is 462, and the sample space is 1,716. So there we go. We're done. We already did the problem. So, and this was just to illustrate, we're just going to be taking everything we did from the last section where we did these, or from the last chapter where we were doing um, counting problems, just combinations, permutations, and now we're going to mix that with the concept of probability, and that's it. So the challenge is just on every problem to hear both questions. What is the event and what is the sample space? So for example, when rolling 20 dice, what is the probability that exactly two of them, exactly two of them will show the number four? 
If you've watched my previous videos, this problem should seem familiar. We already talked about this one, and we said this will come later. Well, guess what? It's later. So see if you can identify the sample space in the event on your own, um, even if you can't do the entire counting. Just see if you can figure out what are we talking about with cardinality of the event and cardinality of the sample space. Okay, give it a try. Okay, I'm hoping what you figured out was that the sample space is just rolling 20 dice, just the total possible outcomes. It could be any set of numbers come up, we're just rolling 20 dice. So when we're rolling 20 dice, the first die can get six faces, the second die has six has six choices, the third die has six choices, the fourth die has six choices, right? And that's going to continue on for a long time. It's just going to end up being six choices raised to the 20th because we have 20 decisions to make and six choices for each of them. Great. Now what? Uh, the numerator would be the event, and the event is sh exactly two of them having the number four. All right, so here we go. Um, what we're going to do here is to say, all right, first things first. Uh, out of my 20 dice, I need to choose which two of them are going to be the number four. So if you can imagine all 20 dice are floating up in the air and you are kind of looking down from the sky saying, okay, well, that's not 20, but you get the idea. You're looking down saying, okay, I'm going to be that one and that one, right? That's your first choice. That's the first decision you need to make and how many choices you have. You have 20 choose two or 20 combinations to choices. Great. Now, do I actually have any other decisions to make? Well, not really, because these have to be the number four. So there's no decision, whoops, there's no decision to be made because I already know they have to be the number four. But if you wanted to write it out, you could. You could say for the faces, I have one face to choose from, and I'm gonna pick that face, and I'm gonna do that two times. Okay? But one combination is one is one, one squared is one, so it kind of doesn't need to be there. Alright, now. Do you need to fill in anything else? Well, yeah, there's a lot more decisions to be made because um, I have to do all the rest of the die and I have to guarantee none of those come up four because if any of them do come up four, now I don't have exactly two. I don't have exactly two. I would have more than two showing the number four. So let's finish out the rest of the die. Out of the 18 die, I'm gonna use all 18 of them in this next decision part of the process. And now for the faces, each one of these, how many different choices do I have for it to land on? How many different choices of numbers do I have? Well, it could be the one, the two, the three, the five, or the six. It can't be the four, right? Because that's the whole point. Um, so there are five faces for me to choose from. And out of those five, for each die, I'm going to pick one. So I'm going to pick one, one, two, three, four, five for the first die. One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, not four. One, two, three, five, six for the first die. One, two, three, five, six for the second die. One, two, three, five, six for the third die. So on and so forth. And I'm going to do that 18 times. And there we go. That is our probability. We are finished with that problem. So the big idea, go away, snipping tool. So the big idea for that problem is take care of your condition first. Out of your 20 die, choose which of those are going to be the number four then choose the face that they will be. Then for the 18 remaining die, out of the five remaining faces, choose which one each of them will be. And then divide it by the sample space. Um, okay, let's do one more example, then we'll take a little break. Um, Sally has a bag containing three reds, two whites, seven yellows, one black. What is the probability of Sally selecting one or more marbles from the bag Sorry, one or more red marbles. <laughs> that would have been a much easier problem the other way. Selecting one or more red marbles from the bag. Now, the key here is the or more. Because what does that mean to be or more? Or more, if I'm saying one or more, that means I can have one or two or three, right? It's, I, I can have any amount of reds. I, so if you think about it, saying like, if you win the game, you, if you pull out one or more red marbles, you win the game. So if I get two, I win. If I get three, I win, right? But if I get zero, I lose. So what's the probability, whoops, of getting one or more reds? Well, hmm, everything we've done up to this point has been about exactly, exactly two reds, or exactly two of the dice will have the number four in them from before. So how do I turn a or more into an exactly? Well, we could look at it as individual little cases. We could say the probability of me getting one, or the probability of me getting two, or the probability of me getting three, and I'm going to stop there because there were only three reds in the bag to begin with. 
So those are all my probability possibilities. I can either get one or two or three, and any of those will make me win. Now, this is one of the perfect examples for complement, right? I could do each of these individually. I could find the probability of getting one, the probability of two, the probability of getting three, or out of 100%, what would make me lose? Well, me getting zero. So what would be easier to calculate? I can do one probability where I get zero reds, or I could do three probabilities where I have to do the one red, two red, three. Yeah, I think you're all with me on this. Let's do the complement version. Let's do the complement version. Okay, so we're going to do this. The probability of me getting one or more red is the same thing as one minus the probability of me getting zero reds. All right, so now if you want to count this up, I'll give you a, a pause the video, give it a shot. Here we go. Sample space. The sample space, again, is how many, it's, this is marbles in a bag. So we're going to say we're picking out seven marbles, right? And the bag has how many in it? Let's see, three, five, uh, 12, 13. Same as before, 13 marbles. We're going to choose seven of them. Now, for the numerator, let's take care of our condition first. If I want to count, uh, if I want to pull out exactly zero mar red marbles, then what does that mean? Out of the three red, I need to choose zero of those. That guarantees I get zero reds. Now, some people might be saying, well, what is three combination zeros? One, do I really need to write it? No, no, you don't. Um, but if you want to think about it that way, that takes care of the red marbles. So now I got to take care of the others. How many marbles are there in the bag that are other than red? Well, there is two, seven, so that makes nine, ten. There are ten other marbles in the bag, and out of those ten, I need to choose seven. And there you go. There's your probability of getting one or more reds as long as you remember to subtract one from that number. Okay, and, and this is calculator work. You can type that in your calculator, get that value. I'm not going to waste your time doing that. That's the big idea. Okay, I hope this got you rocking and rolling on probabilities, and we'll see you in the next video for some more fun examples.